What's up, y'all, and welcome to In the Wild. And y'all are joining us in our fresh and new studio. We are super excited to have a new home for the podcast with, I know it's the end of the semester, so we're winding down with Kitana here, but we still have a lot to talk about because we have so many things coming up in April. Um, How are things going for you, Kitana? They're going about to graduate, senioritis, all the things. They're going pretty well. Things are going the best that they can, honestly. Um, Graduation's coming up. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. I don't know how I feel, but I'm just ready, I think. I think I'm ready. Well, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Um, And I guess we can start talking about some of the events coming up for the rest of this month. One event, which a lot of these... uh, will actually be at the Maxwell Theater. So just okay. shout out to Maxwell because, you know, we love them. Uh, it's a dance showcase featuring some of our dance groups on campus. I didn't realize we had so many, which I th- thought was pretty cool. But Palm and Dance, Jag Elite, uh, and AU Chakra will all be performing at 6 p.m. Wednesday, April 26th in the Maxwell Theater. Um, I hope this becomes like a recurring thing because... I saw some of those groups perform at like homecoming and you yeah. Know. I was about to say I I remember seeing some people dance recently. That's exciting. So yeah, I'm excited to see what they have for their dance showcase because those groups they work so hard. Um, I think they just really help bring the energy for all of our athletic events that they perform at. So shout out to them. We're looking forward to seeing what y'all got going up. Um, also, at Maxwell is Broadway's next hit musical, which is a group that's coming. Mm. Um, I was unfamiliar with this group, but that'll be 7 p.m. Friday, April 28th in Maxwell as well. Um, I, wa- I was curious as to why, like, the end of the semester, when everyone's so busy, they have all of the cool stuff happening, when you're like, ugh, I really have to make, um, have to make an effort to go because it's really cool and really exciting uh, stuff and Students and everyone can get tickets online on the Maxwell website. But that sounds yeah. sound pretty cool. That- I think that might be something I might go to. I think the reason why they do that is because to give students a break. Maybe. Or be like, hey, here's an opportunity for you to have a break, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. That will be nice. motivated like, hey, y'all, semester's ending. Yeah, right know. before we roll into finals. So that way, you know, you have something to keep your mind off things when you're not trying to prepare for those. Yeah, when they're not stressing, yeah. Uh, but there's also another event there that is. I know you're really excited to, to talk about. I am. Um, okay, so the event is called Communicon. Communicon is a student-led event by those in the communication department to bring awareness to everything that the department has to offer, such as certificates, courses, and clubs as well. So I'm really excited about it. We're thinking about having, well, we're not thinking, we're going to be having Jump City there. We're going to have an obstacle course. We're going to have oh, bingo. Nice. Um, SGA is also going to be there. They're providing us food, and they'll have tables to promote to students as well. So, And we're also going to have a live band. So I'm excited. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited because I get to be a part of the alumni panel. Indeed. Go Pamplin, go uh, Comm Department. So I'm excited to, well, you know, I'm always excited to talk to students in the Comm Department. Uh, and just working with students is probably one of the more fun things about about my job. It definitely makes the campus a lot more rememberable when you have those connections. So yeah, and I'm also interested to see like who else is going to be on the alumni panel because meeting students or I guess graduates who came before me, I'm always interested in hearing about their experience and comparing war stories. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in uh, comparing all those war stories. So once again, can you tell everyone when Communicon is happening. Yes, um, Communicon is happening April 27th from 11 to 2 in front of the Maxwell Theater. So yeah, I'm super excited. Thank you, Maxwell. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, they're just coming at it with all the events uh, at the end of the semester. I know uh, that team is super uh, busy They're on right top now. of it. Yeah. Um, another event that I'm really looking forward to participating in is Alumni Weekend. Probably one of my favorite events, especially because I am an alum. Um, we talked to Mickey Williford about some of that stuff last week, but I'm super excited for the President's Brunch. So if you are an alum and you're watching this, you need to sign up for the brunch because it is free uh, on Saturday, April 29th on the Hill Sciences campus. I mean, free food. What else? What other reason do you need to show up to an event besides <laughs> the free food? Um, there's also an AU baseball game uh, happening after 
early afternoon. I'll be going to the Green Jackets games later on in the afternoon Exciting. at SRP Park. And um, I guess this is probably, well, this is my first time noticing this event, but it's going to be like an alumni after party mm. at uh, the Augusta Marriott that night. So my whole Saturday is oh, just fancy. booked for alumni stuff. Uh, coming up. So I'm super excited to be out. I already talked to some friends. So we're going to go as a little group to like certain things. So. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, I haven't seen some of them in a minute. So it's going to be fun to... The recognition is like, it's nice. Yeah, we're going to be out in town for, for a little bit, riding around in Augusta. Uh, is there anything else uh, going on in your neck of the woods that you're excited about? <laughs> the only thing I really got is graduation <laughs> at Communicon. I'm so excited about Communicon, really. Has been planning it since January, so I just can't wait for it to all come together. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, and I, and I like it because it's student-led as well. Like, y'all yeah. are coming up with the ideas and making them happen and really showcasing not only just what the comm department has to offer, but the skills and talents that y'all yeah. have. So that's pretty cool. Is um, Dr. Carey and a few other of my classmates, I think about 10, 10 of us are all, or six, are all of us planning it. So... I'm excited, really. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm excited to see it. Um, another really important thing that has been happening all of April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So with that being said, when we come back, we'll talk to two very special people to kind of help us uh, talk about the upcoming events, but also kind of give some context as to why that month is so important and what we should do to help support um, sexual assault survivors um so yeah when we come back and we're going to do a little bit of video magic so when y'all come back and see us we're going to be wearing different outfits different clothes to talk to our guests so got some video magic coming on stay tuned <laughs> and we'll be right back we are soulful legendary in our own right and undeniably funky home to an experience like no other and nestled on the warm banks of the mighty Savannah River. Augusta is calling you. Welcome to a place of charm and opportunity. And a customized experience. Here we build, think, grow, and forge. Augusta University. An experience like no other. Welcome back, y'all, to In the Wild. And joining me, we have two familiar faces on campus. Uh, first is our Diversity and Inclusion Training Coordinator, Amanda Cruz. And we have our Title IX Coordinator, Julie Nuka. How's it going, y'all? Very well. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. So it's Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and you're both here to talk a little bit about that and some of the upcoming events. But before we dive into that, uh, Julie, I wanted to ask you, for those who are unfamiliar, what is Title IX and who does it serve? Title IX uh, is a federal law um, that is in place to prevent um, or manage any type of sexual harassment or sexual discrimination on campuses, on educational campuses. So um, in everyone, even um, it, it was initiated for students, but us as faculty, staff, um, anyone involved in the institution is protected under Title IX. Um, what are certain some common misconceptions about Title IX <clears throat> that you would like to clear up? Because I'm sure you get a lot of questions. Very good question, actually. <laughs> I do. Um, Title IX is not just about sports. Uh, you, that's where most people have heard about Title IX. And it can encompass everything from sexual assault to sexual harassment, sex discrimination, um, pregnancy, and parenting even. Um, and it does not matter what gender either. It's not just for females. Um, and those are some, some misconceptions, I think, that were important to, to talk about. <clears throat> Where can students go on campus to learn more about Title IX? Well, we have a very, very uh, good website full of information, how to report, um, give you more information on your rights, um, and that website is um, augusta.edu backslash prevention. So not Title IX prevention, <laughs> but lots of information there. Uh, for, I guess, students who may find themselves in a situation like that, does it necessarily have to be the student who has to report these incidents? Or could it be 
uh, someone who witnessed it or a friend or a loved one? Like, how does what does that process look like? Absolutely. Uh, we encourage any and all to report. If you know something, you see something, please report it to my office. Um, employees and staff are mandated reporters. So uh, students, it's your your right. Your we hope that you will. Um, we're not asking anyone to be investigators to determine if something has um, indeed occurred. That's what my office is for. Um, and there's a, a full <clears throat> process in place, including giving um, those involved resources, supportive measures, um, anywhere from counseling services to I can support students in class accommodations and work, if it's an employee, work accommodations, anything to get the access back um, to that education or work environment that was taken away based on the sex discrimination or sexual harassment. How available are the resources? I'm sorry? How available are the resources? How available? Mm -hmm. um, well, they're fully listed on our website, and I help assist. So I will be the go-to in assisting anyone in getting those resources, making those connections. And it's just based on case by case, individualized, based on the incident, the circumstances. And it's as confidential as it can possibly be. So April is a pretty big time because there are a lot of <laughs> events going on. Uh, could you talk about some of the events that are happening this month for Sexual Assault Awareness Month? Well, we have a, a full calendar of events. Uh, everything from, we have three what we call Wellness Wednesdays planned, one, first one tomorrow, um, on various campuses. The, tomorrow's will be on health science. And that's a tabling opportunity. So during our Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we partner with community partners as well as campus partners to get the word out. Um, provide resources, provide the information, the education. So that's what Wellness Wednesdays will do, we'll giveaways, there's some food, um, just an opportunity to talk about it. Um, also across campus, you'll see the Clothesline Project, which is a visual awareness um, display that is up all month on three campuses. Um, so please take a look uh, up the whole time. We also have something coming back for the first time. Um, it'll be its 24th year, Take Back the Night, which oh, wow. is a rally um, where <clears throat> it's community-wide. It's in the evening. Um, and we'll have special guest speakers, um, including someone from our Augusta DA's office that will speak about the, um, the greater the greater reach of what sexual assault um, and, and is happening in our community. As well as you'll hear from three survivors that night as, and there'll be a candlelight vigil. That's awesome. Uh, switching gears to you, Amanda, are there any of those events you are particularly really excited about? Um, I mean, all of them. I know that sounds a little bit cliche, but <laughs> um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about Take Back the Night, actually. So when I was a student here, I had heard about all of these events, but I never went. Um, I thought as my position here as um, a student and then as an employee, and then here on this podcast, I am sharing my survivor <laughs> experience. Um, I thought it would kind of out myself, you know, mm. if I showed up as everyone would know, right? But it is just for everyone who wants to support and who wants to um, really get involved in the Sexual Assault Awareness Month and prevention. And so I'm looking forward to just being part of it at all. <laughs> um, how did you, I guess, find the courage or who supported you into being more involved in these sort of events? Sure. Um, actually, myself, okay. I think. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, myself. Of course, my husband supports as well. Um, he's very supportive. But I, um, throughout my position here at AU, I've worked with a lot of students, either student assistants or students within the honors program or just um, other students that I was in class with. 
And I had realized once I started, you know, kind of being a little bit more open and sharing that a lot of students didn't know about our resources or didn't know about the events that we have on campus and didn't realize, you know, that they could go. And so that honestly encouraged me to keep talking about it and keep being open no matter how uncomfortable it is for me. <laughs> it's not always the easiest to share, but I do it for others. Um, as a survivor, what would you recommend to students who may have found themselves in a similar situation as you? Sure. Um, I would say definitely reach out. Um, you have you know, support on campus. We have our student counseling and psychological services, both on the Somerville and on the health sciences campus, as well as student health. Um, we have amazing doctors, psychiatrists, nurse practitioners. Um, and we also have local in the community. We have our sexual assault services, um, and that is through Piedmont Health. And um, they are free for anyone who has gone through um, sexual assault or something similar. And so there are a lot of resources around that don't require health insurance, that don't cost money. Um, and I would say take advantage of them if you can. I mean, they won't hurt. Um, and even though uh, your experience or situation didn't necessarily happen at Augusta University, mm -hmm. but how did you learn more about the resources that were offered here? Sure. I learned more about the resources that were offered here um, just through professors who had maybe shared, through my orientation when we had, you know, SCAPs and the health, AU Health come around. Um, actually, I didn't utilize our services until I was a graduate student. I'm still currently a graduate student. I took a little <laughs> bit of time off. But when I actually started my graduate program, I was a graduate assistant, so a full-time student and part-time student employee here. And I was actually working for the social sciences department. Um, actually, Dr. Allison Foley, um, I had worked with her. And she had really shared because I was working on a project with um, Drs. Pal Williams and B. Miller, and they were coding some data um, from Twitter on hashtag me too. Oh. And so I was actually coding those tweets and having to go through and read them constantly. And so they were, you know, they made it very aware that there were resources just because that is heavy information. They did not know, you know, my certain um, situation, but they also made it very apparent that those resources were there. I'm glad that you had uh, came across such supportive people mm -hmm. through that. Um, what would you say was your healing process like? Or I'm sure you're probably still somewhat in the healing process. <laughs> um, but what was that like for you? Yes, um, long. <laughs> I am definitely still in it. I um, definitely still love my therapist, my psychiatrist, we're best friends. <laughs> um, but so I was actually sexually assaulted twice. Um, I was sexually assaulted my senior year of high school, which was in 2013, the end of 2013, or the end of my senior year, kind of beginning-ish of 2013. Then I'm moved to um, college in California. I'm from California. So I went to college in the Bay Area and it was still in 2013, towards the end of 2013. And I was actually sexually assaulted a second time by a different person, um, completely different scenarios. Um, and after that, um, I will say after the first time, I didn't necessarily know that that counted a sexual assault, right? Um, it was a situation where I had given consent, then removed consent, and then kind of talked back into giving consent, even though I didn't mm. want to. And so I didn't know what that was until I had actually went to orientation at my college in the Bay Area. And I was actually sitting through a Title IX sexual assault seminar. And as they're reading these things out loud, talking about these events, I'm sitting in the room realizing that they're, you know, talking about me. Right. And it was just this out of body experience. Um, and so that moment was really hard. And then for it to happen a second time where um, I was actually unconscious at the time. Um, so I don't have a lot of memory about it. Um, so those two events happening back to back so close, actually, I didn't get help. Right. I um, tried my best to just handle it myself, which it was not. <laughs> I did not handle it. Um, and I kind of just pushed it away and kind of went on with my life and thought maybe if I distracted myself enough that it would be fine. Um, flash forward, I transferred to Augusta University in 2017. Um, 
it was a little bit hard coming to a new place from California. So I had some of those anxieties kind of like flash back up. But again, I pushed it down, want to finish this degree, right? And it wasn't until I got into my graduate program and that research that I was telling you about when I was reading it and I was constantly reminded of those two times that I actually had to tell Dr. Foley, you know, I can't do this. I didn't tell her why. I just said, I need to be off this project. And I realized that it was coming back all these years later, affecting my work, affecting my student life. And I said, enough is enough. I'm just going to go to SCAPS, right? And so I went to SCAPS as a full-time student. And um, they were actually the ones who recommended that I go to Piedmont Sexual Assault Services, telling me that it was free, um, telling me that it didn't matter health insurance-wise, um, free for life, just because of my experiences. And so I worked with both of them um, and then when I became a full-time employee, I then transferred out of SCAPS. But I found that they were very supportive, very helpful. And I encourage a lot of students to use them because your student fees are paying for those services. So you might as well take advantage of it. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, I know that it is not easy to share. No. But I am glad that you're able to find such support throughout your journey here from, I guess, your student experience, but also now as an employee. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. And if I may say something, you, she, 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 I want to point out a couple of things she said. Sure. One was about the consent. Um, mm -hmm. That is something that we are really trying to educate on. Um, it's not as clear cut. The majority of, of people that are sexually assaulted know they're, they're, they're assailant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is one thing we're really highlighting on this Sexual Assault Awareness Month is consent. What it is, um, how, you, so we can educate, so we can prevent, hopefully, um, or make people aware that you were, it's okay how you are feeling. Um, validate those feelings and, and recognize what it is, um, what was done to you. Um, another thing that I wanted to highlight is her not reporting. Mm -hmm. So very common. Um, so few people report or seek help. And that is another reason that we wanna we want we're glad to be here today because maybe this is reaching someone that needs needs the help. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, mentioned a great point about consent because like you shared that consent can be given away at any moment. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't necessarily um, a long standing sort of thing where you can remove it and it should be respected. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other things coming up for Sexual Assault Awareness Month that you'd like to share? Um, so I mentioned the Take Back the Night and the Wellness Wednesdays and the Clothesline. So we also have we're partnering um, with a local, I mean, a local, a, a Augusta University sorority, um, um, Chi Omega, right? Yeah. Their philanthropy is also sexual assault and domestic violence. And they're ho hosting a um, walk a mile on the last Saturday of the month. No. No, it's this Saturday. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's this Saturday. April is already getting full. Oh, yeah. um, this Saturday, um, a mini fundraiser for um, Sexual Assault Services, our community partner, and to bring about awareness. So that is another. We'll be there as well, providing resources. So whenever possible, um, there. there's also other engagement opportunities. Um, organizations reach out to me to provide information. Um, but I think I've highlighted on a good bit of them, um, uh, for the month. Yeah. Thank y'all so much for sharing your insights and experiences with us. Um, and for all of our listeners and, uh, watchers out there, feel free to learn more on the Title IX, uh, site and also on social media. We'll be talking a lot about the upcoming events. Thanks y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Grant Worf and I am a financial aid counselor here with Augusta University. We are devoted to providing students with the necessary financial assistance 
to make their college experience both affordable and achievable. We also promote financial literacy and offer a variety of resources to help students better understand their finances. Once a student submits their FAFSA, we are then sent that information and we review it to determine their eligibility for Title IV funding. Our main office is located in Fanning Hall on the Somerville campus, and we also have an office located on the second floor of the Wellness Center on the Health Sciences campus for all of our graduate and professional health sciences students. We can be reached at 706-737-1524 or by emailing osfa at augusta.edu.